Well, it's Wednesday morning and it's 8.30, which means it's time for Clarion Connect with Ron Wilshire. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Steve. How are you doing? It's, uh, you know... I'm doing okay, I think. I'm I'm having positive outlook week. This is this is my positive outlook week. Well, we're we're going to talk about positive outlook uh, today with the Good Neighbor program at Clarion University. We have uh, Jimmy McGee and Matt Schaefer from uh, that program. They they both uh, serve in additional capacities at Clarion, but uh, the Good Neighbor program has really been a start to. Uh, to help students living in the community and, and actually be good neighbors. Uh, welcome, Matt. How are you doing? I'm fine, Ron. How are you? Good, good. Do you want to talk a little bit about the Good Neighbor Program or, or Jimmy? Uh, yeah, a couple years ago, uh, I was staying back in Such ty- some of the types of things that uh, you do in the program. Uh, usually, it's off campus, uh, students living off campus in, in rentals, and um, I suppose alcohol uh, use in, in the uh, in the uh, p- apartments are part of the program. Oh, yeah. Target. Uh, you know, there's data out there that supports that. that uh, One of the most public areas is on one of the entrances to Clarion on, on Fifth Avenue. A couple years ago, that was uh, pretty well known as a, a party central and uh, things like bizarre signs for Autumn Leaf Festival. And so there was a lot of concern, um, both from the university community and, and the public. And even if you were just driving through Clarion, it left an impression. Um, one of the things we did on Patrick Avenue, as we do in the other um, street avenues uh, within the town, and in the township, is getting out and meeting with students at their apartments, talking with them about what it means to be a good neighbor, not only uh, talking about the alcohol consumption and the large parties, uh, but the noise and the uh, impact of uh, the people around them, whether those would be other students or whether they would be community members who live here or near home. Um, we have them definitely about the yes class, and at this point, uh, if you do get a drop down from the cabin, uh, we are rather pleased to see that on any given day, uh, there's a lot of trash uh, that goes to the impact of Jim and I both have heard from students who uh, stated that uh, it's no longer as fun to go down there because uh, they know that people are watching and people are calling all behaviors with uh, our detrimental uh, to student studies as well as uh, the community members around them. Sometimes it's just as simple as that. Uh, talking with the students about uh, what do the homes look like next to their parents and do they have We've been, you know, been able to keep some of the 
In terms of enforcement, I realize that the South Fifth Avenue area is uh, in Clarion Township for so many boundaries and that. And uh, does uh, the um, law enforcement there cause any problems, or has it in the past? Um, you know, law enforcement has been very supportive of what we've been doing. The uh, state police uh, has been um, pretty really busy um, because they have been coming to court. And they've been very supportive. Uh, James and Jim really have the opportunity to solve that problem. But those things are very well aware that in the future, we have been state police or the Clarion Road Police, um, other agencies, whether that would be, uh, you know, they may very well In your capacity at the university as a director of judicial and mediation services, you also uh, get to see the students at some point too, because in addition to the, the civil law, they also face university student code. That's correct. Um, we have a, a really great working relationship um, with, in particular, Magistrate Quinn. Um, Jimmy and I have a really good uh, rapport with um, Magistrate Quinn. And if uh, any of the students do violate the policies or, uh, in many cases, control substance or uh, laws, uh, we'll be redirected for educational opportunities because ultimately we'd like to uh, partner with. Now, in addition to uh, uh, those offenses, uh, I guess depending on on the type of offense, what type of uh, Education or punishment do students face when they when they see you? We we try not to uh, use the term punishment. We we try a lot to uh, refer to it as an educational opportunity uh, with the kids more on tutorials uh, related to decision making related to living in community as well as all the areas that can be um, and then we have uh, workshops available with uh, Jenny uh, works with those that have the basic action workshop for control uh, substance workshops. And we also utilize our counseling services that are on campus for uh, worry or students if they would like to uh, go to a private uh, clinician on campus that can do that as well. Are the cases you see ever so severe that they are? Just well, in plain words, kicked out of play. Um, yes, unfortunately, we have to have a small percentage of students, um, you know, um, but unfortunately, yeah, those the students do really unfortunately not meet any visual need for an informal uh, hearing. They would go to a counselor, and um, a group of faculty students would determine uh, if it was best for them and the community at large uh, to separate the students. Now, Jimmy, you deal with the drug and alcohol education. Do you want to explain what's involved there? Yes. Um, yeah, when, a, when a student violates a person that has an unsteady different infection, and the program that we use at Clarion is called BASIC, a uh, program used at you know, 14 state schools. We had a proxy grant up in the state state a couple years ago, and uh, I was on the committee uh, sort of BASIC.
So, so most students, most students have a second violation. Okay. Do not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What uh, is there a, a program in place that they do, or you move into other yeah, areas? Yeah. Particular cases that come to mind about you know maybe a student being grateful for even going through this. Oh, yeah, we've had several. I mean, I can think of students like that. You're talking about being pleased that they went through the program, right? Yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you what the basic thing was. Over years, there have been 100 percent of students who have been through the program. More than that, over 300 or more well I think an interesting point is that that you know, all students don't suddenly change when they go to college. A lot of students uh, coming are coming here from high school with those behaviors already part of their DNA. Yeah, right. Uh, the the kind of big thing is, it's oftentimes difficult because a lot of people away from home for the first time. I'm not having to, you know, put parents to put right here with them. I don't have those things that do do right here. What's the uh, most positive thing you've found in um, working in a program that, that that sticks out in your mind? I would say the uh, relationship with the students. And in the days when we're talking to neighbors, same thing. I've had overwhelming support both ways. Because we're in the middle of a grant that supports the neighbors from the different side of the family to be safe. And we've heard a community on this. And uh, we've had many. They just want to be happy about the way things are right now. We've had many who are, and, uh, and, and, and you know, the, the, the ones that, that are happy about what, what's going on is that they build relationships with the students, and, and, and the students feel that they have that relationship. So, you know, it has been very positive. You're listening to Clary Connection. I'm Ron Wilshire, and our guests today are Jimmy McGee and Matt Schaefer. We'll take a short break right now. McGee Women's Specialty Services at UPMC Northwest welcomes board certified obstetrician and gynecologist Dr. Linda Barnhart. She joins doctors Ira Abramowitz, William McGrail, Eric Fackler, Bart Madison, and John Myers. Dr. Linda Barnhart will treat and provide women's health services, including pap smears and pelvic exams, pregnancy care, and family planning. To learn more or to schedule an appointment at the Franklin or Clarion office, call toll free 855 286 4032. Again, the toll free number is 855 286 4032. These days, the concept of value matters more than ever. And you'd be hard-pressed to find a better value than high school sports. Extracurricular activities, including sports, 
make up about 2% of the budget for a typical Pennsylvania high school. In return, participation in sports promotes citizenship and sportsmanship. Sports also instill a sense of community pride and teach lifelong lessons about cooperation and self-discipline. They encourage physical fitness. They produce community leaders. By offering so many benefits to the community for such a small percentage of the school's overall budget, it's easy to see why high school sports are one of the best bargains around. The real cost would come from not having them at all. High school sports, a winning part of complete education. This message presented by the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Directors Association. If you care about this election, do you have an opinion? If you want a voice, if you want to make a difference, show it. Show it. When voting this election day, November 6th, you will be asked, but not required, to show a photo ID. To learn more about the new law in Pennsylvania and how to get a free photo ID from PennDOT for future elections, call 1-877-VOTES-PA or visit votespa.com. Sponsored by the PA Department of State. Welcome back to Clarion Connection. I'm Ron Wilshire talking with uh, Matt Schaefer and Jimmy McGee from Clarion University about the Good Neighbor Program. I wanted to start this segment off with a little bit about the, the start of school each year seems to present uh, uh, different challenges. This year there were a number of large flower uh, urns overturned on uh, Main Street in Clarion, and Clarion. That kind of thing grabs the attention of the community right away. Um, you can work on all the programs and everything throughout the year, but one or two highly visible elements can uh, uh, force people away from all the positive things you're doing. But the, So what do, you, what do you do when you get a visible, a highly visible action like that? That's a uh, good question. Uh, yeah, initially, we tried to reach out. That was uh, very unfortunate. Uh, one of the referring to it was the LA Mayor's Store on Main Street. Uh, that was unfortunate on a number of levels, one of the English itself. Uh, the mayor had been in uh, talking with our first year students that day, or the second weekend, about the office behaviors, promoting the I think one of the most remarkable accomplishments, probably, it's mainly from the PR area, is uh, a couple of years ago, for every year at Autumn Leaf Festival, uh, students, uh, primarily along Fifth Avenue, would have these sheets with messages uh, hanging from the houses, and you know, they were questionable and, uh, you know, attracted a lot of uh, negative attention in the community, but uh, they disappeared over the uh, past couple of years, and I I would guess that that just didn't happen. Sure. Um, we have been getting a large number of Uh, we did reach out to students and challenge them. 
especially in the case of most cases, uh, the chiefs themselves, if they were in the photo, uh, they usually mentioned that they allowed all these things to be. There was something that was a copyright violation going on, where it wasn't conforming with the ordinance so, um, in a lot of cases, we, um, you know, did not necessarily even look at the content, although we would kind of tend to think about uh, things in the same framework we would as part of the debate program. Um, and we told folks that we have a question or a problem with how we're moving the sound out to the chamber to get it approved, and um, you know, so be it, it can go back up. Uh, we, we have a moment to do that. After about a year or so, um, the science just didn't show back up. You mentioned uh, attitude change and, and beliefs. I believe that uh, one of the campaigns that the university had, as well as other schools around the university, was uh, uh, peer education in terms of letting people know that uh, everybody doesn't have to get uh, wasted. And Jimmy, do you want to talk a little bit about what you did there? Yeah, Well, that kind of goes back to the upsetting the flower on Main Street. Sure, maybe, I mean, some students do that that kind of stuff, but when somebody's just driving by or sees it, automatically they think all the students are doing that. That's exactly right. And in that order, the good neighbor comes in. We, we really want the community to know that there is a program out there that we can't help. Uh, we, we have an alcohol task force on campus that has been there well, well before I, I came on campus. And that's for community members, the university, our staff, and the faculty, administrators. We get together four times a year, and, and our goal is to reduce alcohol risk behaviors often on campus. And, uh, and we want to many people who, who would like to join the group because the all the input we have to get is that kind of to make things fun. Are there any efforts to uh, provide more activities for students that, that are here uh, so, so that they can have fun in other ways? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah there is. Uh, it's called ESF Time. It's every Friday and Saturday night. And it's reached out to Thursdays and Sundays as well. That program comes from the University Activities Board office. Uh, they, it's, it's all an evening. They put them up and they made it what them was and it's a student prompt letter. So on Thursdays to Sundays, from uh, 8 to 10, we have a radio on the AFP station from 8 to 11. Students know that something's going on, whether it's movies, trivia, uh, game shows, whatever that may be, there is something going on and it happens in the same place. So yeah, we, we have and different organizations as well. Student organizations have taken a big part in that. And, uh, and, and they're the ones that from the program for students to get involved. Is that for uh, residents, all students, and any students, all students? So, um, what's been one of the most challenging parts of your job? I'd ask you what was the uh, most rewarding, but what the challenging aspects of your job? Uh, going through a culture change. Uh, you know, 
and any time we go through that is challenging. And, and one thing is before we had the program, it's implementing the program and seeing the program out and, and bringing in the program. Uh, we have to do some positive things, but um, the other part of the program, I mean, when you're out there and you're trying to promote the program, as a matter of fact, we spent their eight hours that day talking about the program too, with the mayor about it. And then that night, that something like that happens, that's a challenge in court. So, I would say, you know, any kind of going to the whole thing, it can be difficult. The more students that find out about this, you know, the better off we are to reduce the place to like attack. I mean, students at Senate and Clare University has been a fabulous part of this program. They were out handing out these shirts and, you know, Matt's graduate system under this because he's been fabulous. Just getting out there and getting the word out to students, talking to students about the program has been a big part of Community wise, if if any community member has some concerns, is there anyone to call or contact? Absolutely. Uh, we have uh, part of it's currently a post there's in almost every business on Main Street uh, and, and in the surrounding area. Uh, that night, we went out and spoke to community members to get their feedback from them on the first survey. And yeah, they can contact me or I if they have a concern. And uh, within 48 hours, usually it's that day, but within 40 hours, given our schedule, we will go out and, and address that. We will talk to the students about that. What are some of the phone numbers then? Uh, just to give them out. Uh, sure. Yeah, 814. 814- 393-1918 Great, so that uh, gives yeah, every, everyone call. a chance to call. And, call and then, uh, you know, and I encourage people, if, if it's a situation, I can call Borough Police. Call 911. If it's a situation right there and it's, it's, it's loud and, 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 you know, he's calling and, and his, and his the officers, they will respond and, and, and they do a great job responding to it. If it's something that you're concerned about, uh, I mean, if, you know, if it's the next day and you wake up and you're saying, give us a call, we'll go there and uh, we'll talk to them. And, and, and usually, I know the one year we stopped out at many houses, only went to one house the second time because we built a relationship with the students, the problem was in front of us, and, and we, we talked to them about eliminating it. How is it working with the parents of the students coming here? Uh, we, we haven't had much to do uh, with, with that. Um, with parents, uh, but when we do our original walkthrough in the beginning of the year, meeting and greeting students, we do get to meet some of the parents. And I, I, I believe that it's the student parents that follow the program like this, and then the parents themselves sort of pass around their students. So uh, that has been positive of what how we go. So in the orientation process, do they get to hear this? Material. Yes, uh, we used to do a, a, a one-hour segment just every weekend. Now it's a six-hour. Uh, we're students in groups of about 250 go to different rooms throughout the day and, and, and not be the money group. And, uh, and there is a, uh, an hour-long uh, segment talking about good neighbor and the mayor has been very supporting that. And uh, we do, we talk about uh, giving the information about the program. Do you want to talk all about... Uh, I mean, we're primarily about education here, but what are the consequences if someone gets arrested for underage drinking? I understand it can have a, a lasting impact on your future goals, such as, uh, you know, if they're trying to be a teacher and that type of thing. So, and it's, it's not a, really a scare tactic. It's just reality, and a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's absolutely right. Um, you know, underage drinking, um, I thought about it, and you know, you're, you're working at a uh, lot of drivers fights in a while, and you're working at a large fine, um, right away, uh, through the magistrate process. When um, students sometimes will, uh, you know, accept that responsibility later on, they'll get that expunged. One thing that never really does get expunged is that they're not doing it right now. So if you um, are employed from a place and you kept the driving history, you're going to show a gap there. So you're still going to need to disclose it at some point. A lot of the public programs are also looking at questions related to expungement. So they're, they're really going out of the way to target and uh, really screen down the applicant pool. And you want to be in the pool of somebody 